One of the most predictable things that happens when a community is formed is that community always forms some type of division. The division forms between two or more parties and the more vocal and strongly opinionated individuals of each group will do battle, debate, fight, smear to win the affections of the population in numerous different fashions. It's the whole in-group, out-group thing that we do with strangers and people on the internet who share a similar perceived rhetoric or quality about them. Now, this isn't to say that creating communities is bad. The autistic community has been great for me in a lot of different ways. But if we do let radical speakers take the majority hold over a community's rhetoric, I believe it can lead to a lot of illogical and irreparable damage to the integrity of that community and the perception of other groups towards that community. So welcome back to the dark side of the autistic community. I'm Thomas Henley and today we're going to take a deep dive into why neurotypical hate sucks. And I'm going to be offering some reasoning to why I think it's a lot more pernicious than it seems on the surface. I recount this story many times on my Instagram page, in the blogs that I create, but it's clear to me that the autistic community, whilst making large positive strides, is producing ever-growing more radical stances that a lot of people from outside the community find a little bit hard to digest. The community was once a place for nuanced and open discussion about autism, and it's gradually been incorporated into other more established diversity related movements. This ultimately increases the amount of general support that that community gets, but creates inconsistencies in the rhetoric or the views which the larger party sort of overwrites in a sense. So you have certain values, certain beliefs that perhaps one group has, and in order to be absorbed into a bigger group, you need to adjust the things that you say, the things that you believe, the rhetoric that you spin in order to meet that other group's standards. Nowadays, these strongly radical voices of movement strongly enforce a group rhetoric over individual thought and freedom and expression, making the autistic community more of a dogmatic space rather than an open place for like-minded individuals to have discussion, to self-discover, to learn things from each other, to form a sense of community. I cannot tell you how many times amazing creators or new creators have come into the autism space with a positive attitude and a, and a positive message as well, but ultimately just get shot down, verbally attacked, shunned into exile because they didn't follow the rules other more established people have asserted. One of the more pertinent issues in regards to our topic today is the strong in-group, out-group mentality. It's not necessarily just drawing lines between people based on their traits, but also on people's opinions and beliefs. AKA, you're autistic, but don't agree with some of what the autistic community says, and so people don't like you, and people shun you, even though it's the autistic community and you're autistic. But yes, even then, I can imagine some neurotypicals who support neurodiversity-related rhetoric would be encouraged to do so, but treated with suspicion on the grounds of assumed inherent ableism. Don't know if you guys have heard that before. I've had comments like that before as well. I'm unaware, I'm unconscious of some type of ableism. I'm like, what, what do you mean? It's one thing speaking about the shouting matches between autistic people in certain communities, but there's another more self-destructive attitude that I've alluded to, and that is hating on or othering neurotypicals, or even holistic individuals, people who aren't autistic, from the autistic community. Look, I am somebody who has felt the full force of the nasty neurotypical individuals. I was filled with jaded hate for most of my youth, and was met with many barriers due to my differences, which have had large impacts on my overall quality of life and my progression in life. What I don't believe in is pointing the finger at neurotypicals as being the problem. 
Neurotypicals lacking in sense, intelligence, or morality. Neurotypicals being a group that we must avoid, ignore, pathologize. In the same ways that we talk about negatives and positives about autism, we can say the same for all neurotypes, even if they're just the typical human brain. It, uh, you know, there isn't really a typical human brain, but speaking in generalities, of course, people who aren't autistic, who aren't neurodivergent, it is very common for people to paint whatever dominant or privileged group as being the issue. And when that's bolstered with a lot of personal negative experiences and emotions with that group, that privileged group, it feels even more justified to hate on them. But whilst bullies, discriminatory and closed-minded individuals exist, so do the caring and open-minded neurotypicals. Honestly, the more time that you spend with people of different neurotypes, you realize that someone being autistic, whilst you can relate to them on some points of experience, does not mean you'll get on with them, does not mean you'll agree, does not mean you'll have the same opinions, does not mean you'll have the same approach to things in life. It just means that some of those experiences and perhaps some degrees of perception might be a lot more in line and so might make you feel a little bit more connected to them in the instance. My mother, my best friend, and many of my friends are not autistic, but they are amazing and lovely people. It's not to say that they don't work, think, and behave differently to me, but I offer the same open-minded and adaptive mindset as they do to me. The problem with hating or pointing the finger at any group, no matter its relatively larger size, is that whilst it may feel justified from personal experience or perhaps certain rhetoric that's been spun, it is still discriminatory and you're still stereotyping people based on their neurotype. It may sort of be a bit different in nature and a little bit more understandable, but in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you know, you meet a neurotypical person and you, you, you just overall characterize them in a very, and stereotype them in a very negative way. I think that's, that's, that's still bad. Like if you, if someone met an autistic person and they did that, we would be very upset to them. Just as how discrimination or bad blood towards us shuts us down from taking other people seriously and wanting to connect with them, you could say the same for other people too. It doesn't matter how much sort of baggage and personal experience is behind it to make us feel that way. It's still not the best thing to do. It's like when medical professionals talk over your own lived experience and don't listen to you. It doesn't foster a desire to hear them out for what they have to say, even if they do have some good points. You know, I'm sure there are many people out there, in including myself, who have had those types of experiences with professionals. And although they do have a lot of knowledge, sometimes, <laughs> if they approach it in the wrong way and they don't factor in your lived experience and your experience of autism, it just tends not to work. And you don't tend to connect with them, you don't tend to take them as seriously because they're not taking you as seriously. I think interpersonally, friends, family, relationships, it can shut down a lot of potential connections with wonderful people, wonderful acquaintances that could go on to develop a really great friendship with you. And in a greater sense, it de-incentivizes people to learn and accept autistic people. If they have this experience of autistic people just labeling them as evil, and sort of telling them all the ways that they're, they're doing things wrong just because of some type of language that they've used or perhaps asking questions which, you know, have been asked to us forever, which, you know, obviously it's a, a big sort of myth within autism and such. You know, it's, it's gonna stop them from wanting to like understand you, connect with you. They've gotta have a certain degree of like respect as a human being, even if they are neurotypical. That's a crazy idea, isn't it? We gotta, we gotta respect and be kind to people, regardless of their neurotype. My God. <laughs> I'm just very opposed to this idea that we have to battle people. We have to battle something. We have to fight them. Where is the love? Where is the love? 
Where is the embodiment of acceptance, patience, open-mindedness that we want from others? Blind ignorance is not hate. I think one of the difficulties of placing the blame on individual neurotypicals for the issues that autistic people face is that whilst we might be very read up on autism, most people just aren't at all. It's not part of mainstream education or conversation, and many people don't have the ignition to enter disabled and autistic spaces to do that digging, to do that learning, to empathize. To give a different example, you may meet someone who is German in the UK. This is a completely fictional thing. There's no, no reality embedded into it, but it's just used for an example. You have some stereotypical ideas about what they are like and what terms they use. You may ask lots of stereotypical questions that get on their nerves that they hear a lot of the time. Maybe Germans are discriminated against by British people. Or, or that person has had a lot of experiences with British people, which are negative. It doesn't mean that you are inherently a bad person or you're actively contributing to an issue willfully. You just don't know about it. No one's told you. You didn't realise that German people have a difficulty living in the UK. Never come up in your life. It's never part of your Sophia, your social media, your videos, you know, your TV sets. My God, I'm speaking like I'm from the 90s, I am. Uh, Netflix, you know, you've never seen anything on it. Not even a news report. The point is jumping to accusing people of bad intentions is generally just a bad idea, especially when a community is relatively quite small and information is mostly centralised just around that community. In the large majority of cases, it's unwillful ignorance, not active participation in opposing us. Sure, some people can have in the moment reactions to, especially if they hold incorrect knowledge or stereotypes. They may have beliefs on what we say and take strong and potentially un unknowingly inflammatory stances based on little evidence or experience. But even then, you can still address it calmly and chalk it up to ignorance and move on in a lot of the situations that I've been in. People can be willfully, fully, consciously ignorant and contrary just for the sake of being contrary. And I, I, yeah, we do have the right to address that, to call them out on it. I just don't think we should always jump into assuming that that is the case. I think if information comes to light that that is the case and, you know, we get to know someone a bit more and, you know, they just have these views on things and they understand the sides and they understand all the complexities of it and they still have those views, then I understand that. But most people just don't, don't like in, in general life, especially if they're neurotypical. You know, they've got no ignition to be a part of neurodivergent spaces unless they have someone in their life who is neurodivergent. The stand for change. There's generally two routes that you can take for change. You can do battle or you can convince and reach some degree of a middle ground. Battling, shaming and fighting does produce change and it does feel righteous and good. Like you're fighting injustice, like you're fighting inequality, like you're fighting discrimination. Even if you're just talking to that one random passerby that you met, you know, at a bar or something, and they've just spouted a bunch of things that don't make any sense and aren't true. It, feel, it still feels good to be able to like, tell them how wrong they are, to tell them how discriminated they're being and how evil they are, you know? and fighting that and taking that and taking that home and feeling like you've done a good job. It's the difference between that very accusatory and aggressive, like militant self-advocacy that I've talked about, talked about before and the peaceful assertion of boundaries and self-advocacy through adult, peaceful, calm conversation. The thing is this militant style of advocacy, it's only truly effective in changing people's minds in public not in private, not what they truly think. Sure, some people may feel shame, they may empathise with autistic people and then go on to learn more, but I don't think 
it's the battling attitude which truly shifts the perspectives of other people and builds lasting positive rapport that can sort of bolster and help us get our needs met in, in the world or help other people learn about autism. I'm sure many of you within my community do not need this video. <laughs> like, I understand, but I've seen this neurotypical hating or sort of battle-ready attitude replicated in a lot of different online spaces and even in, to some degree, in real life too. I just don't want to sew my mouth shut about this, you know? Because as the communities grow, the more I see this type of attitude, and I think it's incredibly counterproductive. Like, we're already entering a point at which the autistic community's content is being seen by a mainstream eye. You know, you have sort of the formation of contrary opinions from reacting YouTubers, people creating autism cringe, r slash disorder cringe. Um, that you see on Reddit, of course, and people are having a lot more of their eyes on, people are having a lot more of their eyes. People are seeing a lot more autism stuff and developing opinions on that stuff to foster a uh, positive way of sort of advocating for the rights of autistic people and helping educate people on autism, I think is the best way of going about it. It sort of leaves little to criticize in a sense if we make sense if we you know don't sort of follow extremely radical sort of perspectives and rad use radical sort of attitudes and stuff towards people if we if we didn't do that and we just advocate for autistic people and try to help people understand it and build positive relationships with communities outside of like disability and autism communities i think it's going to be a lot more productive like, it's, it's just my opinion. I understand. It's just my opinion. But from what I know about people, you know, trying to do this myself, trying to convince other people, it really just, it really seems like if you really want to genuinely change someone's mind, shift their perspective, and help them understand more about autism, you need to somehow make it, make it relatable. You need to make it a positive experience. You need to sort of stimulate some degree of curiosity and intrigue. It like someone who has a different brain to you and try and find some ways of relating, some ways of explaining like autism things to neurotypicals in ways that they understand, some ways of translating the negative experiences that we can have as people in life so that they better understand how people can treat us and how systems can treat us and how organizations and businesses can treat us. You know, I think that's a really positive thing to do. And I hope that, you know, more people do that. <laughs> I just, I just gushy out all of my hopes and dreams onto, onto your face. I'm sorry. I mean, social media, I think is massively to blame with, the, with this. It's always the most contrary, like, hotly debated things that get pushed in the algorithm and then the people who do that more often tend to get pushed up more and they usually tend to be a lot more radical. If we continue to battle, we do invite the formation of more divides in our community and more contrary detractors. I think we'll, we'll have a bit more of a point when criticizing our community and the things that we say because of that aggressive approach that some people take. But I would love to hear your perspective and thoughts down in the comments. I'm not the the autistic messiah, the like the the window into every autistic person's mind. So I am completely open to other perspectives on this, other ideas. So please do put them down in the comments. I'm sure we can have some lovely discussion as as per usual. Did you once have this perspective? Did you once advocate very forcefully and aggressive. How did it how did it pan out? Short term, long term, I'd love to know. Hopefully we can have some productive conversation on this topic. And if you'd like to hear more from me and you're new here, consider subscribing and flicking that little bell notification thingy so you get updated when new videos come out. I am a full-time content creator, so if you do want to continue, if you want to continue watching me, if you want me to continue creating content, you can better further support me through my memberships where only 
they're only 99p. You get a ton of cool perks, including uncut live streams of the commentary stuff that I do. And if you do want to see my commentary videos, I am slowly moving them over into a new channel called Inside the Audiverse. So if you want to hear my thoughts on autism content online, please go and check it in the description or click on it when it appears on the end screen thing. Love you guys. Make sure to stay hydrated. Your lips looking little chaps. You know, no hate, you know. I forget sometimes too. Get getting that lip smacking action. <laughs>